previously on Weathering the Storm. We saw our first case, imported case, on the 23rd of January. The new virus is more infectious than SARS. Therefore, it's harder to stop it from spreading. And with the step up to DOS gone orange, we will now step up further precautionary measures. Uh, we did different things at different times. We were doing uh, temperature screening at uh, Changi Airport. We set up a total of seven contact tracing centres. Our mission was to detect and uh, trace cases. We will be able to stop transmission then and then. In early 2020, Singapore saw the widespread transmission of COVID-19, some from unknown sources. In light of the worsening COVID-19 situation, the disease outbreak response system condition level was moved from yellow to orange. Shortly after, a wave of panic buying followed. Goods and everyday essentials like rice and toilet paper flew off the shelves as long queues formed at supermarkets. Panic buying and hoarding spreads over fears of the COVID-19 virus. The panic buying comes amid concerns by the WHO that masks and other protective equipment are running out because of rising demand. Given the shortage of masks globally, ST Engineering had plans to set up production lines to manufacture its own surgical masks here in Singapore. With that, the first batch of locally produced masks were made in early February 2020. Simultaneously, the Defence Science and Technology Agency, who has established a wide global network of partners, worked alongside other agencies to help ensure an adequate supply of personal protective equipment by sourcing them from overseas and bringing them in. We were activated by Ministry of Trade and Industry to help to procure the PPEs. So what we did was, we emailed and we co called the suppliers to ask them whether they have any available stocks for us. We worked very closely with our freight forwarders and we got them to help bring in the masks. We tracked the shipment by trucks and by flight to make sure that a number of it is actually stuck. Having secured masks for the nation both locally and overseas, the Singapore Armed Forces quickly mobilised around 1,500 servicemen to support multi-ministry efforts in the packing and distribution of masks. While we wish it to be contained, if it doesn't go the way we want and it spreads, then we have to be ready the round-the-clock mass packing operation comprised eight-hour shifts with 450 servicemen packing 200,000 masks per shift. So CSS is responsible to sustain the Army and NSF across a full spectrum operation. We are used to working across a different functions, across different stakeholders. And therefore, when we, when we were stood up to support our COVID, uh, it was a, quite a seamless transition. The key challenge is about the time pack and distribute the masks so that the masks can get to the household to assure uh, the country that we have enough masks uh, to look after their well-being. We went ahead and uh, planned out the different production lines, what are the raw materials that we require to uh, ensure that the entire operation of packing the masks and delivering the masks can be done. Standing shoulder to shoulder with their uniform counterparts in the mass support operations are non-uniform personnel from the Ministry of Defence. 
we are racing against time because uh, we need to do quality checks. You know, every time we count, we will ensure that no strips are clean. You know, because once you do the packing, what we actually were, were thinking is that every household in Singapore is going to get this mask. With the masks packed neatly into boxes, a means of tracking the overall supply was crucial to ensure that every household got what they needed. There was little room for error. We create this application so that the commanders are be able to keep track of all the masks that are being packed uh, so that they will be able to know the estimated time and also the speed of uh, the mask being packed across two locations. It was now time to get the masks distributed. This next part of the operation required the tight coordination of SAF operation planners at various geographical sectors. We were informed on the 30th of uh, January that we need to distribute the mask on 1st February, so we have less than two working days to turn around. PA responsibility in this uh, mask distribution is we must ensure there's a smooth flow and a seamless collection for our residents. Okay. Each CC needs different amount of masks. Some need 60 plus boxes and some just need 30 plus. So we have to calculate how many masks the CC needs and how many loads are we giving to each winkle? My goal is to ensure that all CCs receive their mask and everybody in the neighbourhood can right. get just one of the mask. To alleviate the surge in demand for surgical masks, engineers from DSTA designed and produced reusable masks. These fabrics are weaved in such a way that actually it uh, enhances the efficiency for filtration. So these are different from what you find out in the market. The mask protect holds its shape well and is more structured such that it is more comfortable and is a, a lot more breathable. With the surgical masks ready for distribution to households, agencies across the whole of government and their volunteers worked hand in hand to ensure that information on mask collection times was readily available. So even though we have assured um, citizens that we have a one week period for them to actually collect, a lot of them are, um, are also still figuring out um, a lot of things. Having a call centre like this, having a reassuring voice to tell Singaporeans that they do have time and um, giving them that sort of clear instructions um, is actually very helpful. For Singaporeans who needed help over the phone, the People's Association ensured its hotline was fully manned supported by staff from the Ministry of Defence who had ran call centres for previous mass collection exercises. Our role in the call centre is not just to provide advice, it's also um, a great opportunity for us to be involved in uh, contributing to the society at this juncture. It's a climate today that we are in where people are feeling isolated, there's a lot of confusion, um, and so it's a, a good platform for us to provide that listening ear, to be that voice of assurance, to let people know that we are here to listen to them. I find that it's really meaningful during this time that uh, I'm being uh, able to help the public and also serve Singapore. To keep essential supplies flowing and our supermarkets stocked, the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Enterprise Singapore, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as well as other national agencies like MINDEF and the SAF came together as one to help ensure that critical imports were able to reach our shores and remained adequate for households despite the pandemic. Many of our essential supplies from Singapore is actually supported by uh, all the foreign countries. The COVID situation at each of these countries will have implications to the supply chain as a whole and eventually may affect the essential supplies from coming into Singapore. That's why at MTI level, we are tracking this very closely. And of course, if required, there's always a backup plan and contingency plan to mitigate such contingencies. Our task force, uh, we were set up to help um, the ESG and MTI to establish a distribution centre, uh, mainly to resupply essential goods to 
outlets in the eastern area of Singapore. Because of that, I was the stock control officer. Uh, I'm involved in uh, monitoring uh, the inflow and outflow of goods, um, track the level of stockage, and also establish the process surrounding how we can uh, record this uh, into the uh, existing IT system. So we needed to plan transport for the, the goods itself. Uh, we need to plan uh, how the shipment comes in and comes out. I think the government reassures us we do have enough supplies. In that sense, I wasn't that uh, scared or affected. Yeah. The residents, when they come and collect the masks, they are, they are very happy. But we were in the coffee shop, people who knows me, and then they were just conversing. Oh, I don't know, the Singapore government is so good that we, we managed to get this mask, especially when everywhere is out of stock. So when I hear this, I feel very happy deep inside my heart. My parents are very proud. They are very glad that I could help. My sister said Jayo to me, so I was like, yeah, it's kind of uh, sweet. The SF must always be ready uh, to help whole government, help the whole nation uh, as and when necessary as part of uh, its mandate to serve Singaporeans and to defend the country. Uh, we have good people, good leaders, uh, good systems in place and a whole ecosystem of uh, contractors, essential partners and of course the whole defence tech community behind us in this fight. So far I don't have any problem with the shortage of masks and I can see that uh, the Singapore government themselves have uh, produced or supplied to all the people and uh, I don't see any shortages. We should all be thankful uh, of the current uh, governance that we have. Our defence ministries, our home ministries are doing very, very well, protecting us. We are one of the countries in the world that I think we are slowly succeeding in this uh, battle against the virus.